Yo, this episode of Inuyashiki, yo, yo, this was an excellent episode. This was an excellent episode. I mean, there are few anime out there that really get me riled up out of my seat and start jumping on, you know, rooting for the main character and all of that. I mean, sure, you know, in most anime, there's some really cool scenes, but very few actually make me jump out of my seat and I'm going like, woo, throughout the entire thing. That's exactly what I did throughout this episode of Inuyashiki. So in episode 4 of Inuyashiki, this episode pretty much just shows us that Inuyashiki is starting to actually adapt to his newfound powers. He's still having some complications with, you know, fighting and other stuff around that nature, you know, regarding his abilities, but at the very least, he is still, you know, making slight improvements in terms of when it comes to getting used to these newfound powers that he has now acquired. So in this episode, we actually get introduced to a new villain within this episode of Inuyashiki, which is actually a Yakuza member. And, you know, for the first, like, one minute of Inuyashiki, I was just like, holy crap. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I I'm just like, man, this show ain't holding back. So when it comes down to this Yakuza member who has been introduced in this episode of Inuyashiki, he has been going around picking up girls off the street, taking them hostage, drugging them, and raping them as well. But that is all put to a stop within this episode of Inuyashiki, just from what transpires. But we see that this Yakuza member ends up taking hostage of a girl named Fumino who we got introduced to and we also got introduced to uh, this other guy named Satoru who is actually Fumino's boyfriend. Just to put it simply, this Yakuza member appears at their household and tries to take advantage of Satoru and Fumino as well. But that is until my boy Inuyashiki arrives at the scene. Like, you should have saw me throughout this episode. I mean, I was getting hype in, you know, quite a like quite a lot quite a lot in this episode I, I was getting pretty high just to be completely honest with you and when i saw my boy appear at the front door i just i i, I fanboyed i really did i was like yo my boy appearing at the scene hell yeah he's ready to lay the groundwork down he starts fucking punching the other yakuza members and then he goes for the head honcho who is taking advantage of satoru and fumino and he tries to bear hug this guy you know and i'm just like yo he is going in but then he is finally put to a stop by the head yakuza member by putting several bullets to his head now of course you know as we know in Yashiki, Inuyashiki is a cyborg now, okay? So he doesn't die from this, but when he actually wakes up from this, it seems as though he actually, me mechanically he's been damaged. Mechanically he's been damaged because of the fact, as we see directly after that scene, when he tries to bring back uh, Satoru to life, you know, after he passes out, we see that he no longer seems to have control over his, you know, power to actually bring the dead back to life. So because of the confrontation that he had with the head Yakuza leader, it seems as though, you know, he has lost the ability to actually, you know, revive people back from the dead. So how this will impact the future episodes of Inuyashiki, I'm very curious to, you know, see what's going to happen. But I would personally have to say that this is probably a good thing, you know, regarding the series because if you know the main character is able to bring back people from the dead 24 7 there really isn't you know a crisis at stake revolving around the main character's challenges so in turn while yes this does suck it is probably actually a good thing for the series because again why watch a series in which we have the main character always able to solve his problems without any challenge 
whatsoever. So that is when we see in this episode that in order to bring Satoru back to life, Inuyashiki had to use good old CPR and try to resuscitate Satoru back to life. Luckily, he was able to do this, but yes. But yeah, when it comes down to the rest of the episode, the rest of the episode was all action-based. I mean, you know, Inuyashiki just arriving to the Yakuza headquarters or, you know, wherever their hideout was and taking care of pretty much every individual there and even rescuing Fumino in the process. And not only that, but when we see Inuyashiki actually, you know, you know, open up his back to, you know, release the guns on, you know, or lasers, whatever, whatever weapons are installed in his back. We see him use that on the Yakuza members. Now, the thing about this is that I really thought that he did not have control over this power when it comes down to him opening up his back and, you know, unleashing hellfire, so to speak, because, I mean, his eyes are closed, he's looking down, I mean, sure, he can, like, scan, like, every single target around him, but when it came down to that scene alone, it really seemed as though, like, he was killing every single individual, but to know that he didn't kill any of the Yakuza members, that is what surprised me the most. Because I was like, is he actually going to kill someone here? Because, you know, uh, Inuyashiki's whole philosophy is to never take the life of another individual. Pretty cliche enough, but that's usually how, you know, good versus evil goes. You know, good, never take the life from another individual. And that is exactly what Inuyashiki does. He does not take the life of any individual within this episode of uh, Inuyashiki. What he does, though, is he gouges out the eyes of all the Yakuza members. And I believe he also did something to the ligaments of all the Yakuza members as well, as he stated to them that you are not going to be able to see throughout the rest of your life. You will not be able to move, you know, and do the things that you used to do whatsoever you're gonna have to have someone care for you you know you're gonna just have to be basically dependent throughout the rest of your life until your death and I hope to God that you feel remorse from all the things that you have done to every single individual out them whether it has been you know raping them hurting them or even putting them to death I hope that you could at least feel remorse uh, you know, at the very end of your death, because this is your life throughout, you know, the rest of your life now, because you will not even be able to kill yourself, even if you wanted to. So knowing what Inuyashiki did right there, honestly, that's probably worse than death, honestly, because death is like the easy way out. But to know that you can no longer do the things you used to do, and just move your body, see your, like, you can't even see your kids. Like, some of these Yakuza members probably had a family as well, but they will no longer be able to see. They're going to have to remain dependent throughout the rest of their life until their death. And uh, honestly, he made the good decision there. He didn't take their life. He just made it worse for them. I'm like, yo, ain't Yashiki not holding back whatsoever so to see what transpired in this episode i mean it was a quite it, it was quite a simple episode as far as you know the presentation of what it brought to all of us but man this was a hype episode of inuyashiki maybe i'm fanboying a little bit too much but i mean i personally really got hype throughout this episode of inuyashiki like it was really entertaining for me let me know your thoughts in the comments down below was it as entertaining for you guys as it was for me just let me know your overall thoughts in the comments down below be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and hit that red subscribe button down below if you want to see more with that said everyone i'm professor anime and i'll catch you all